presentation I have whipped up about turning your passion into reality. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people get into their life and, and they're told to follow your dreams. And I believe that if you do follow your dream, that you will succeed more than if you just do something for the money. Like if you love arguing, being a lawyer is probably good for you, right? But if you're just a lawyer for the money, you probably won't perform better. You probably won't perform adequately. So that's what this is about, is about, okay, you have this passion, okay, is it, can you turn that into reality? And if so, how? And um, that's what we're getting into here. And also, what I wanna get into is this is an open, this is, I don't need to hear myself speak. If you wanna hear something, <clears throat> if you want me to clarify something, if you want a whole new topic brought up, I could scratch this whole damn thing. I don't need to learn about this. So if there's anything you want done, let me know. So feel free to interrupt. Um, it's not gonna offend me. It'll offend me more if everybody's bored and throwing shit at me. So let me see how you, okay, there it is. <coughs> In the word Okay. And what I do this for is so you get a view of reality of the real world. If someone wants to come here, that's great. I'm here anyway for the bodybuilding show to support, you know, obviously a sport that's been very good to me. Um, an industry that's been good to me and it all starts at the grassroots, what you guys are doing tomorrow. But um, at the end of the day, what I found when I graduated university, there's a lot of theory and not a lot of practice. And I'm in the real world every day, either kicking ass or getting my ass kicked. And that's something that hopefully you can take home and, and learn from. You know, I've had a lot of these lectures where I'll come back and I'll get emails a year later and kids will be like, hey, I was able to do this, this, and this. I've talked to a lot of people out of starting businesses that would have failed. A lot of people have taken risks that worked. So it's up to it's up to you to take the information. And obviously you do have, I'm sure there's some great professors here. But for the most part, what I've found is it's, there's a lot of theory. And there's a way to put it into practice and hopefully you can get something out of that. People here have been in a short-term relationship. You thought you were in love, you did these old things, and then all of a sudden you're like, shit. Bitch was crazy. <laughs> okay, my man right there. Yeah. Actually, I think we talked about her. Yeah, my we man did. right there. You don't have to raise your hands because, you know, she's probably here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now nah, this, is, this is a complete sausage fest right here. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of passions that come into your life. Like, you know, I'm going to go into this later, but I wanted to be a basketball player. I, in eighth grade, I was one of the tallest kids. God had other plans. I didn't grow an inch after eighth grade except um, below the belt. So at least he gave me some blessings. But no, nonetheless, I mean, you know, is your passion, is it just because you're caught in the moment? Like you see a bodybuilding, I so many people at bodybuilding shows, like even last weekend, when I guest pose, I'm sure I'll get some tomorrow in the crowd. They're like, I'm so motivated to get in shape. And they see all these people up there and they don't see the fact they're binging and purging after the show. We'll leave that to another lecture. but. These people, they, they get in the moment, right? And then that passion fades away. Is it something you've been passionate? I've always been passionate about helping people. I have a hero complex. I'm that guy, if there's a car at the side of the road, I pull over. You know, a lot of people just drive right by. That's me. I want to help people. Um, is it something that you've had for a long time? Or are you just like, hey, you know, right now it seems good. Like with the girl. Maybe she's really good at doggy style. You know, maybe is that, but is that gonna last you through the years? You know, is that gonna carry you through? I always relate things to sex, by the way, that's just where my mind goes. Yes. We are, like everybody goes, oh, well, you're just trying to be like this guy, you're just trying to be like that guy. Or, you know, you're just trying to, we all emulate someone. I think our personalities are kind of a collection of the people we hung out with as kids. When I was at Weeder, there's a guy, Richard Hart, and he's actually still in the industry. He's in his mid fifties now. Um, I'm pretty sure his penis doesn't work anymore. He's so old, but I noticed that we traveled together literally for 60 days out of like 80. It was crazy. And I came home, my wife's like, you're acting like Richard and you kind of absorb people around you. So I grew up, I mean, we were just talking in the car. I grew up in Inglewood, California. I still only listen to hip hop because that's where I was. Even though I'm a suburban father who drives a minivan 
in the northwest suburbs of Illinois and goes to soccer practice and hangs out with dudes who don't dress as cool as I do. At the end of the day, man, you're kind of a collection of where you grew up. So, you know, as it stands, you know, your passion and what you like is what you grew up around. It's nature versus nurture. It's a little nature, a little nurture, but it's not one of each. So finding your passion, you know, what makes you tick for you versus nutritionist X? You know, what's going to be your point of differentiation as a nutritionist? Is it your ability to deal with people with celiac? Is it your ability to deal with, I don't know, like me, I deal with bodybuilders or fitness athletes or athletes. Why would someone come to you as a nutritionist? Well, I mean, that's, that's something for you to think about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, you're, you, you haven't started the business yet, but when you do, if you do that, you know, that's um, something to look at. What are your strengths, you know, um, when finding your passion? What are you strong at? For me, I'm strong at marketing. I'm strong at business. I'm strong at knowledge of product. So I went into something where I can utilize all those strengths. Okay, so identify those strengths. Now, what are your weaknesses? I can't do math. I suck at math. Um, I'm not really good. You know, entrepreneurship is great. 90% of all new businesses fail though. So 90%, you're a douchebag if you think you can start a business and it'll actually make it. What makes you better than 90% of those people? So you gotta find your, but my weakness as well is following protocol. I worked well at Weeder because I made them enough money where they let me do my own thing. But at the end of the day, I don't play well with others and I don't like authority. So entrepreneurship might be for you if every boss you have is gonna fire you. So I really don't think I had a choice. If you don't keep going, your competition is gonna knock you down. So you gotta realize, what is the cost of that startup? Do you need investors? And if you have investors, at the end of the day, they own your company. Do you do it organically? Do you have money saved up? Do you have a rich relative? I mean, what's the cost of your passion? And you got to realize it's your passion, even a career. Yeah, I like basketball. I don't make the NBA. <laughs> Can I turn that into a career? So yours is a career. You like nutrition. Yours is a career. You like helping people. You can turn that into a career. But if you're passionate about, and shit, I think anything is somewhat monetizable, but to what degree? And I'll get into that later. Bug collecting. There's money in bug collecting. There's, because I mean, you get whatever the, those people who fucking look at bugs and shit. What are they called? Entomologist. Bug experts. That's a good word. We'll, we'll just go with that. <laughs> we'll pretend that's the right word. And then again, if you have a business, can you build it on sweat equity versus capital? There's so many businesses that were built on someone just busting their ass and working and building a base. Like uh, the guy who details my cars, bought equipment for a couple hundred bucks. Now obviously has better equipment. Started one car, word of mouth. He was able to build it with sweat equity. Um, capital is where you have to invest in. Let's say if I want to run, tangible goods are a good example. If I want to run, for example, protein, like to start up MTS, the cost of doing a run, a, a GMP, everything perfect run, seven figures. That's a lot of fucking money. Can you build it with sweat equity or do you need capital? And if you do need capital, where do you need the capital? If you are going to get sweat equity, do you have the time with your current job to get that sweat equity? So there's a lot of variables involved. I mean, everybody says, follow your dreams. I don't think anybody actually looks at what it takes to follow your dreams. How many people end up broke and on their ass because they did follow their dreams. I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm just giving you all out. Look, 10 versus a thousand. And that's completely feasible in this day and age. Like I can, I come here now and there's, you know, this, obviously this isn't for marketing. There's, there's 20, what, 30, maybe tomorrow I'll hit 100 people, right? Go on YouTube, do a video, now hit 100,000 people like that. So that's what you got to look at is that social media has changed the way you can proliferate your work, how you can market your products, how you can market your service yourself. There's a guy in California who had a little wine store, and at night he'd go in his basement and talk about wine. He went viral. Guy's a millionaire now. There's a woman online who opens toy eggs. They're surprise eggs. My little kid watches it all the time. She made $4 million last year. 
opening fucking eggs. And they're not even, like two year olds are watching them. She's making all that Google money, man. So that's, um, that's where it's changed. Um, again, YouTube, it's Google. YouTube's owned by Google. It's Google for video. There's another way, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram's probably, um, till they start charging for it. Like I think Facebook's kinda, that was the business. Started in colleges, then it moved to business. That was the hot thing for business, right? Now I think businesses are more moving more towards Instagram um, just because it's more interactive. You know, you got the uh, pictures and everything. The only issue is the hyperlinks don't work. That's it. So, you know, those are your social media tools. They've changed everything about the game. I mean, obviously, um, luckily we were the first to adapt to that. Internal tools, obviously a lot of business is B2B. And I have a whole, my whole lecture on that, um, not lecture, but my presentation on that at the Internet Retail Association is the fact that business to business salespeople, they're dead. I mean, selling business to business is nothing. Apple went in and literally just said, okay, we're just gonna market to consumers. Do you think Best Buy wants to carry Apple? They have no fucking choice. Apple is such a force because they target the consumer. They speak to the consumer. Like Apple does cool shit. Like what they're doing with the watch. Have you seen how brilliant that is? That's the new wave of marketing. So while I put internal tools here, it's always good to have your contacts, your LinkedIn's, you know, um, your networking, old school stuff. You'll always need to know people. But at the end of the day, you're marketing to your customers. Your customers are everything. You know, I was, um, I will, if I'm looking at my email, what I will do is like business contacts, like retailers, they're, they're over here. Customer emails get answered first, no matter how stupid the question is. Cause I get some really dumb questions, but those are first. Cause that without the consumer who needs the fucking retailer, right? They become poor. It's pointless. So what I recommend is obviously finding something that you're passionate about, that you love, that also pays your bills and pays it well, unless you become a teacher, then you're fucked. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, I think that's the nature of that story. Um, Is that what you want to do? So oh, open yeah. Q&A, um, essentially anything. I mean, that's just the background. Um, again, I don't need to hear myself speak. In fact, I have not a boy. I'm actually kind of happy. Ability, like for, like, for instance, like it's not a game, you know, having something like that, that you say every single time kind of helps get into people's heads. Slogans are cool if they have a position or a statement. I don't really know if it's not a game does shit. I think the main thing I do is at the beginning of every video is I say tigerfitness.com. Mm -hmm. I mean, there you go. But I mean, if you have a good, like, just do it, you know, it's not a, it's not a game. I stole that shit from DMX. So, I mean, <laughs> actually I didn't, some radio hosts in Indiana did when I was doing a show with them, but, um, I just rolled with it. But at the end of the day, I think that your slogan has some meaning. I mean, a lot of it, like, what is there's some really stupid ones out there. You're like, what? You know, it's like supplements that work muscle. It's like, that's some generic bullshit right there. That took you how many hours to figure out supplements that work. Good job. You know, that's why I'm like, you know, ours is no hype, no BS, just results. You know, and I'm not going to use that, but I'll, I'll put it in that, but I'm not going to be like, I don't expect people to re 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 recite that, you know? I think slogans can help if they state a position. The main thing you need to do is state that position in the mind share of the consumer. And if a slogan helps you do that, then use it. But a lot of times slogans are just corny and they just go right over people's heads. But some, you know, a Avis, we try harder. You're more than just a number here. I think that's a great one. But it's not something like, just do it. It's not something you'll say. Like, I'm not gonna be out at the, in, the, in the gym like, hey, you're more than just a number here, but it's something to look at when you see that, you know? I think Nike has pretty much done everything right.